Okay, so hello everyone. This is my first time in Singapore and I'm uh, very happy to be uh, here with you. Uh, I'm Guillaume Laforge. I work for uh, Google, uh, but I've been working on the, the Apache Groovy project for, for the past uh, 13 years now. Uh, a little bit less lately, but uh, I, I've been one of the key uh, members of the project. Uh, I'm also the uh, PMC, that's uh, the, the project management committee. I'm the chair of the PMC uh, at the Apache Foundation because the, uh, the Guri project uh, moved to the Apache Foundation, uh, when was that, a year and a half ago, I think, uh, or before. Yeah, something like this. Oh no, two years now, I forget. Uh, so in my uh, day job, I'm a developer advocate for Google Cloud Platform. Uh, so I speak about various things uh, like, uh, I don't know, Google App Engine, uh, machine learning APIs. That's what, uh, that's what I'm going to cover uh, at Vox Days Singapore. Uh, but tonight I'm going to speak about Groovy and in particular what's new in Groovy. Uh, what's new talk uh, kind of expects people to have some knowledge of Groovy. But if you don't, that's okay. Uh, are you all Java developers? Everyone? Who's, al who's already got some experience with Groovy? Oh yeah, nice. And uh, I know at PayPal as well, there were there's some places, there are some places where Groovy is being used, uh, if I recall correctly. Uh, but I, I don't remember the details. All right. So, uh, in Groovy we have uh, what we call AST transformations, that's code transformations. Uh, which allow you to uh, implement existing design patterns with just the use of an annotation or create some boilerplate code with uh, such annotations. <laughs> so for example, uh, we have, uh, so we, you know, it, it looks just like normal uh, uh, Java annotation. Uh, we have annotations for generating a two-string method or equals an hash code or uh, at immutable, which creates an immutable class with everything uh, that's needed. Uh, the, um, like making the fields private, uh, like creating proper equals and hash code, etc. All the things that are required to make something immutable uh, so that you cannot uh, change the, the values of its attributes, etc. And we also have a, a code transformation called canonical, which is a bit like immutable, but it's we, we could have called it uh, mutable in a way. Uh, so it's adding things like two string uh, methods, uh, equals and hash code methods, uh, various uh, constructors uh, for uh, depending on the, uh, the properties of that class. So it's going to add a person uh, string name int h constructor, but also a person string name constructor and a default constructor. Uh, and yeah, uh, and you, you can see, for example, when I call the two-string uh, method down there, this is the uh, the, uh, the two-string that is generated instead of the usual uh, Java uh, two-string. And here I'm using the include names parameter, which actually adds the the name of the properties in the two-string. Uh, so so this is uh, this canonical transformation. Uh, but the thing is that we uh, change how it was implemented because it's combining different code transformations. Uh, before it was kind of a hack of how it combined things together, but there's a mechanism called meta annotations in Groovy, which allows uh, bundling, you know, in somehow uh, code transformations or annotations together. Uh, what's interesting as well with meta annotations is that it's a compile time feature. So for example, you can create a meta annotation that groups uh, different annotations together. So let's say you have a, 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 a what example could I, could I take like a at business something uh, annotation that could combine uh, at uh, data object plus at uh, uh, various annotations that are grouped together. And you could just simplify that with just one annotation, your own uh, business annotation. Uh, and that's, uh, that's pretty handy. So that's the mechanism that we used to combine add to string, add equal to Nash code, etc. together. And Canonical now uses that mechanism. And uh, in particular, this uh, include names uh, parameter that is passed to that annotation 
uh, is actually delegated to the under underlying uh, two-string uh, tr transformation. So it does the delegation of the the properties, the, uh, not the properties, the, the parameters of the annotations. So this, uh, you, do, you don't need to read that uh, carefully, that's the, the documentation uh, <laughs> that we have. Uh, and the, the, there's what we call an annotation collector, which collects the various annotations together. Uh, and there are, there's also more control on the kind of uh, how do you delegate to include names who, uh, for example, you could have two annotations with uh, the same parameter, potentially. So there's even more control on how you combine annotations or code transformations together. So these are the, the five modes which are available. <clears throat> so uh, we have, uh, like in at canonical, at immutable code transformations, we also have a bundle within those transformations. We have tuple constructor, which creates uh, a new person uh, first uh, constructor. And here what's new is the fact that we have uh, added uh, some pre-post uh, hooks or events so that you can do some additional checks. Uh, so since the constructors are actually generated by the GUI compiler directly, if you want to add some stuff in the constructor instead of re-implementing the constructor yourself, uh, because it would be uh, the one uh, used and not the one generated. So if there's one that you provide, it's the one that's uh, used. We don't generate one. But then if you want to do some additional checks, for example, uh, making sure that the, the first name is always lowercase or uh, ensuring that you actually pass a, a non-null or non-empty uh, uh, first name, you can add such uh, checks. So these are uh, new things. Um, the tuple constructor, which generates the constructor, usually generates uh, those uh, four constructors. So here you have three properties, first, last, and age. So there's this first constructor, which takes all the uh, properties. There's another one, which takes just the, f f the, 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 the first uh, parameters, one which takes just the first name, and there's one, a default constructor, which takes nothing. But sometimes you want to be to have more control and you can pass uh, defaults equals true to just generate the one which takes all the parameters so, th so that you're sure that uh, someone calls that constructor with all the, the parameters. Well, people could always you know, pass null values, obviously, uh, but at least you're sure that someone will pass a value for each uh, of the properties. And also perhaps for those who are you know, groovy a little bit less, uh, so there's no public keyword on class, so it's not public class, because by default classes are public in Groovy. Uh, when you see string first, last, or int age, these are properties. So it's just like uh, Java Beans. Uh, there's actually a private field that is created, plus a getter and a setter. So it's just a shortcut for having a get first, set first, and a private string first uh, field. That's how it works. It's a little refinement. Um, similarly to tuple constructor, so we have what we call the, the map constructor, uh, which is the ability to pass, uh, inste instead of uh, passing just the values directly, dear, König, Regina, uh, to the, the three uh, first, uh, oh, there's no, oh yeah, author is uh, below, which adds the, the book name. So what we call the, the map constructor, it's the, the ability to actually give a name, uh, on, reuse actually the name of the properties, uh, to be able to uh, recognize the various uh, elements of the, uh, the, the various parameters of the constructor. Uh, so this is the, the map constructor, and we're also adding the same mechanism uh, with pre and post uh, events. So if you want to do some uh, additional manipulations, uh, and those, um, what you see here, uh, something I forgot to say is that uh, the value of this uh, pre uh, per, uh, annotation value, it's actually a closure, a groovy closure. So it's code that's gonna be integrated into the implementation of your constructor done by the groovy compiler. Hup. Um, so, Groovy, uh, 
initially at least was created as a dynamic language. So things like the method dispatch decided which method should be called uh, was done at runtime, but we also added uh, several years ago uh, static type checker and static compiler. So it's possible to generate pretty much the same bytecode as Java C, the Java C compiler does, uh, which means that Groovy is just as fast as Java if you use the, the static compilation uh, feature. Uh, but the thing is, there are still things like uh, code transformations here, auto clone, which adds clone cloning capabilities to, to your class. Uh, here there's a, there's a typo, notice that, uh, so I wanted to exclude from the, the cloning operation uh, I wanted to exclude the, the surname, but I did a, a typo, and it's sir instead of uh, I in, instead of <coughs> U. And before, uh, this error would have been caught only at runtime, uh, and you wouldn't, you know, or, or so I don't remember if we generated a, a runtime exception, or uh, since the property wasn't found, uh, it wouldn't. Uh, do anything about surname. I forget what it was doing, but at least the behavior was wrong anyway. So what we do now is that if you also make typos like this uh, in the parameters of uh, the annotation, the compiler actually throw the compile time error, uh, unlike what we were doing before. So here, yeah, you'd get uh, in the, so I don't know what's the exception we throw. Um, yeah, it's a, a compilation exception. Uh, and then it's the, the error message says error during autoclone processing excludes property surname doesn't exist. I, men I mentioned uh, at immutable for creating uh, immutable classes. Uh, the thing with immutable was that it wouldn't it wouldn't work on a hierarchy of classes. So it, it, it was you could only put at immutable on a top level class a class just extending object basically. Um, so, for example, here I have a person class with a, an equals and ascot method, doesn't matter much. Uh, but then I want to have an athlete which extends person. Before that wasn't allowed, but now it's possible to do so. So here I'm also customizing things like uh, uh, what I do in the constructor, um, if equals and ascot should call the super equals and ascot from uh, the parent class, the person class. And then, uh, yeah, it's just a bunch of asserts uh, checking that it does what uh, we expect it to do. Like, uh, so we include the super properties and not just the ones defined here. So we include sport, but uh, name as well. And uh, so in two string, when we, in the customization we do, so we also include the super properties so that there's both sport and name that appear here. So now at immutable works across class hierarchies as well. Uh, with uh, Java 8, oh by the way, who's using Java 8? Are there still people stuck on Java 7 or before or B? Yeah, some, okay. Unfortunately, I'm sorry for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we, we, we have time for Java 9, <laughs> it's not even out yet, but uh, <laughs> well, it's another kind of worms. Um, so we, we also changed some of the uh, features of Groovy to also support some of the, the recent uh, features or aspects of uh, Java 8. For example, uh, immutable, uh, in order uh, for a class to be immutable, all the uh, fields, uh, all the properties of those classes have to be to, to also support this uh, immutability aspect. Uh, so there's only certain uh, classes or, you know, like numbers, like strings, etc., which can be uh, considered immutable. Uh, but then we also added things like optional uh, in, in terms of uh, immutability because it's also immutable. Yes. And uh, we, the, the compiler also checks, uh, so it's not just the fact of using optional, but the, the, the how, how do we call the the class on which uh, that you wrap in, the, in an optional, uh, I don't know if it's got a particular name, uh, we also check that date here is or isn't uh, immutable. And in this case, a date is a mutable object, so you're going to get a compilation exception because date is mutable. And we want something that's immutable. <coughs> uh, 
some new transformations. So I really start this uh, uh, all the new, the novelties with all the, the code transformations, and I'll move uh, uh, later on to some other aspects like the the Java 8 features uh, that are coming up. There's a new transformation um, for you know those times where you have to extend an existing class uh, with or an interface or an abstract uh, an abstract class that has got plenty of methods which are abstract. And sometimes you really just need like one method uh, to be implemented, but not all of them. So you still have to implement them and uh, just put void or uh, empty bodies inside. So here, uh, auto implement actually, uh, so that's kind of the, the code that's generated here. Uh, so automatically it implements all the abstract <coughs> methods, get, add all, close, size, which are part of the uh, abstr abstract list and uh, closable here. So it provides a, a default implementation for those methods. So you don't have to write this boilerplate code yourself. And then if you have a particular need for customizing uh, the get method or something like that, just implement the get method, but you don't have to implement uh, the rest. So it can be handy also for uh, you know testing purpose. Uh, if you want uh, some mm, kind of mock objects or such and you just need a particular method to be implemented um, you can have the implementation of the other methods that you don't care about to be implemented for you uh, you can also customize things like the exceptions which are thrown um, the, well here you saw that there were no exceptions thrown but you can say okay i want auto implement but i want the body of those methods which are implemented to throw an exception in this case, you can say, okay, I want an exception to be thrown, IO exception, or a particular exception with a message, or the last one, you can pass directly a bit of code in, inside a, a closure here. That's gonna be uh, what's gonna be used inside the, the implementation to throw a custom exception or things like that. Uh, <coughs> there are, uh, as part of the, the Groovy distribution, there are a few command line tools that you can use. There's the Groovy console. The Groovy console, that's uh, this uh, tool here. So it's a kind of, uh, you know, just a, a little code uh, editor. Uh, so you can, you know, run code and have syntax highlighting and so on. So it's a mini uh, text editor. So it's not really, a, you know, an ID. And we also have, um, I can run it here. Groovish. We also have a. Oh, why is not? Isn't it working? Groovish. Hmm. That's strange. Perhaps I'm not. Uh, yeah, I don't know why. I'll, I'll figure out. Uh, so Groovish, it's our uh, REPL, our uh, shell that you can run uh, within uh, within a uh, within a shell. And there's a useful feature in Groovy, which is the grab. Uh, it's a code transformation, actually, as well. So it's add grab, and you define a dependency that you need in your uh, Groovy script or class. And you can put add grab on things like imports. But for example, when you use a shell, you enter line by line. And there was no way to define an annotation, or you'd have to put everything on a single line or something like this. So there was really no way of adding uh, dependencies within your uh, shell, your Groovy shell. So there's a special command that you can use within Groovy shell to say, okay, I want to add the Guava dependency in my shell so that, ca so that later on I can import some of the, the classes from Guava. So you can uh, quickly try uh, some code in, in the shell uh, that way. I forgot to put that back in plain screen. So I continue on the AST transformation. Uh, you can uh, add delegate, that's for doing delegation on uh, properties of the class. So usually you put add delegate on uh, uh, add delegate string name, but you couldn't put delegate on getters. Uh, but here, for example, um, uh, so somehow it's a way to uh, yeah, just, just do the, the delegations on getters if you want to do some particular treatment in the, in the getter so that when I do the, the uppercase uh, method, which is going to uh, call the toString method 
of the underlying property that it's delegated to. But since we put the add delegate on the getter, uh, it's going to actually return the reverse name instead of, uh, uh, and then you called uh, to uppercase um, here, but it's going to get the name in reverse order instead of uh, in the normal order. Uh, yeah, this one not very interesting for those who are using JAXB for marshalling. There's a small shortcut. Uh, so instead of, I, I forget what it is, uh, you have to, uh, yeah, you usually have to do JAXB context, create marshaller, create a marshaller. So there's a shortcut uh, if you don't want to uh, do each time create marshaller. But in the case you want to reuse the, the marshaller all the time, it's better to call create marshaller. Uh, but otherwise, uh, if it's just a one-off uh, thing, you can just do check B Marshall instead of uh, create Marshall, then Marshall. So it's a little shortcut. All right, uh, we have a class. So that's something that existed uh, before, but I'm showing uh, what we had before and the new thing in the next slide. We have a common line interface builder for creating, when you create comments, uh, which takes arguments that you want to run on your uh, uh, in, in your shell. Uh, so you could define things like, um, um, so here you, you'd call that, I don't know if I have a bubble showing how you call it. Uh, yeah, no, I don't have, I should have added that. Uh, so you, you could call a yeah, groovy uh, dash, uh, dash dash <coughs> audience, dash dash help, etc. Uh, so that's helpful for creating command line tools. So this is the, the old way of doing things, but we also added uh, an annotation-driven approach so that you can just use an interface to say, okay, uh, I want to have a dash H or da dash A uh, to, and it, and it, what's nice is that it's uh, uh, strongly typed in the sense that you have a, an object uh, whose class is implementing the greeter interface here. Uh, which contains the, the parameters which are passed uh, on the command line. So it's, uh, it's nice. Oh yeah, and I've got the, this example. So if you, if you pass those, uh, this argument on the command line, uh, you'll be able to call options.audience to actually get uh, what was passed as a flag on the command line. Um, tap, yeah. So there's a new method. Um, so there's a with method in Groovy which allows you to chain calls on, uh, on the current instance. So when I do new person, I've got a, an instance of person, and everything that I'm going to do inside that with a block of code, uh, it's like doing person.name equals Guillaume, person.age equals 39, etc. But you don't have to repeat person dot, person dot, etc. Uh, and also the thing was that if you wanted to chain uh, something else, like calling the two string on that person, you had to return the current object within the, the block of code here. So you always had to have return it, which is the current instance we're working on, so that you could uh, basically this closure, uh, this method call with which takes a closure would return the actual person being uh, used here. And that way, to string would work on that instance we created. But it was a bit cumbersome to have to uh, use return it and write return it explicitly and you could forget uh, potentially. So we also have a tap uh, method, uh, which is just like with, but we, which always returns the, this instance on which we're, we're working on. So we, we're really you know, tapping through, uh, through it to, uh, to have a peek at that current uh, object we're working on. Well, I'll pass on that one, some additional miscellaneous uh, methods. <coughs> then, some, something scary, JSON, uh, the JSON generator. <laughs> uh, so the fact that Groovy is the dynamic language, uh, although, you, you know, I, I already told you that you can use static compilation, uh, but the fact that it's a dynamic language, you can uh, do some interesting and clever stuff, how you can parse some uh, JSON content. So if you have a, uh, well, I don't really have JSON uh, content handy, but uh, I could do a import Groovy JSON. So let's say you have some JSON equals uh, a, 
uh, one, two, three, for example, and you you you're going to parse that new JSON slurper, the JSON slurper that slurps uh, this parse text uh, JSON. Uh, is it correct? Uh, what am I doing? Uh, hmm? Oh yeah, double quote. Now, what do you say in double quote for what? Oh yeah, that must be it. Okay, thank you. Well spotted. So when you do, oh, so I'm going to put that in a data structure, let's say. So what's nice, the fact that it's a dynamic language, I don't really know what this data, which is uh, returned here, uh, is about. Uh, in, it's actually a map of list or a list of map or that kind of stuff. And what's nice, the fact it's a dynamic language is although there's no uh, A property or get A uh, um, getter or anything like this, you can do, uh, let's say, uh, something more explicit. Um, you can do author and uh, print that. So there's no, uh, uh, you're really just uh, going through the, the, the graph of object and you can do data.author as if you had, if you were working with Java Beans, basically. Um, we have this nice uh, JSON support already in, both for uh, creating JSON as well as parsing uh, JSON. But uh, the, the JSON um, generator, when you create the, the output, uh, your JSON content, uh, there wasn't much control on, on this, so it was, uh, things were done uh, in a default way, so there was no control. Uh, instead, now we added a JSON generator, which allows you to have more control on how you're gonna uh, marshal, uh, for example, this person class into uh, JSON. For example, you can say, okay, I want to exclude nulls. If there are dates, uh, I want a special format. You can exclude fields, etc. So you you can customize the, um, the 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 JSON that you create, and also uh, there's also the possibility of adding some converters for certain types, or uh, if there's a key. So if it's uh, uh, just for the URL of uh, whose key uh, in the JSON object or in in the um, the in the uh, Pojo in the Java Beans. Uh, so it might be only the one particular URL, but not all of them. So you can say, okay, if it's for a particular key, for fa favorite URL, then you do something. Although otherwise, it's the normal uh, normal serialization that happens. So you can do that. Up and the optional key, yeah. Uh, so yeah, you have even more control. Uh, also, something uh, I could mention is that the um, we uh, benchmarked the, the JSON support with uh, Jackson, uh, and uh, we are usually faster than Jackson for uh, both uh, uh, parsing and serialization. But then if you really want more control, Jackson suddenly goes much further than our uh, JSON generator. So we spoke about AST transformations and some other things. Uh, I'd like to say a few words about a new feature, which is uh, AST macros. Uh, so to create AST or code uh, transformations, uh, you had to know the uh, API of the AST, that means uh, abstract syntax tree. So when the compiler compiles your code, it's gonna generate some kind of tree of nodes uh, of a class node, a method node, a property node, etc., code nodes, etc. Uh, <clears throat> but then it's a bit cumbersome to create code transformations. So we wanted to sim simplify things a bit. So here, uh, what my example is doing, it's going to add a method. I forget what my example is doing. So we want to add a new method to a class that would be annotated with the add method an annotation. <clears throat> so before, uh, to implement that code transformation, we had to extend, um, we, we still have to, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say something. Uh, there's a new feature as well, which simplifies this even further. Uh, so for example, if you wanted to create a new method that returned 
42 all the time. You had to know, so th this example is a, is a bit, uh, it's quite simple, but so we are going to add a get message that returns 42, a get message method that returns 42 all the time. So you have to know that uh, the body of the get message method has to have a return statement within which uh, there's a constant expression, etc. So you really have to know the API of, of how the nodes are, the AST nodes are built uh, together. There's a new thing, uh, which is this, so it's not much shorter, but for a more complex example, it can be much, much shorter. Uh, so there's this new macro shortcut, which takes a closure, and which is going to analyze uh, this code there to create the return statement, which contains the constant expression, etc. And then you, it's going to return the, yeah, the return statement here. So you can just pass the body, uh, simple, uh, the code, it should be, I think there's a mistake in my slide because uh, the, the code, that's the, the code. Uh, so instead of simplest code, that should be code or here it should be simplest code. I have to fix that. Uh, so again, just pass that to this uh, method node that is added uh, to the class. So in this example, as I said, it's not much shorter, but for more complex uh, method bodies, uh, that's much, much easier because you really write the code that you want to be added in the body of that new method. Uh, so there are different, uh, yeah, different variants, I can skip that. Let's have a look at a um, slightly more complex example. Let's say that you want to add uh, an MD5 uh, method for each of the, uh, of the properties. Um, so let's see, so for, for example, for all the fields that you have uh, let's say I've got a, a you know a name uh, property. So I have get name, but then I want to add get name MD5. So for each properties of a class, I'm going to add get some uh, field uh, MD5, uh, and I just have to uh, add. So the, the the annotation I'm creating it's MD5, and I just need to add that. Uh, I should have I should show the example first, perhaps, because yeah. So I don't. Show you the um, the example, uh, but yeah. So it's it's really just about decorating. So all the all the fields of the class uh, fields of type string, you put at MD5 on the string on the uh, on the type of that uh, property, and then automatically we're going to add a get the name of the field MD5 method. So how do I do that? Uh, with this uh, macro uh, feature, it's also possible to pass, because the code is not always static, but it depends on the surrounding context, uh, there's a way to do variable substitution. So here, for each of uh, the fields that I'm going to find of type string, I want to actually uh, pass the, 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 the actual uh, instance of that uh, field so that, that, so that I can do the... Uh, uh, the MD5 operation. So return macro, macro is doing this uh, uh, th this job and then here instead of doing new uh, you know new uh, method call, new uh, constant expression etc. So imagine a big big uh, structure representing the nodes of the code. It's gonna somehow parse this code and generate the AST nodes and then you can also have some surrounding context in, in, in um, influence what's going to do what we're going to do inside the, the body. So it's uh, yeah, it's a, a bit complicated to explain, but for those who are um, implementing their own code transformation, it's going to simplify their their lives. But it's uh, yeah, far from trivial. Uh, what else? Yeah, sometimes. So uh, there's a macro class here which allows you to create uh, because uh, earlier you saw that I created a method node that I added to the class etc uh, but if you want to create uh, expressions like a method node you couldn't do that you couldn't just generate the code so if you want to generate things like a class or methods directly there's this macro class concept so that you can retrieve the method nodes or the class nodes and then you can here in my example I can add the new method nodes to my uh, class. Oh, five minutes, I'm, uh, I'm really too slow on, on this. 
So, uh, yeah, so I, I had some examples like this. Let's say you want to create a lock. Uh, so you want users to use that in their code, but really you want things to be implemented that way. Then this is how you can do it with uh, the, this new macro feature. Uh, I'll skip these ones and I'll, I'll show you this. Uh, so in um, there's a new parser, uh, a new grammar that's created uh, in Groovy to s add support for uh, Java 8 features or new operators, etc. Because we had a very old parser and we wanted to add new features, but the, the parser wasn't very capable. So we there's a nickname for that parser, which is a parrot, its name, uh, because it's uh, it's um, mimicking what the old parser does. So all the existing Java source uh, Groovy source code uh, still compiles uh, and parse uh, normally, but we add uh, new features as well. So for example, Groovy didn't support the old do while loop, so we added it back. So nothing special fancy there or uh, array initializers. Uh, it was also another difference with Java. Uh, they weren't supported, so now we're, we're adding those things back. Uh, we also have those new operators, uh, like in JavaScript, for identity comparison, so three equals or uh, uh, exclamation mark double equal. Uh, and also these ones, which I quite like. Uh, I, I've never liked how in Java you had to do not something instance of, uh, because the not is always external to that expression. So we created two new, uh, two new uh, operators there. So it's uh, um, quite an uh, exclamation mark instance of and exclamation mark uh, in. So it's uh, part of the new syntax. Uh, safe indexing, that's uh, when you want to look at what's inside a list or uh, a key of a map. But if the list is null or map is null, uh, it's going to return uh, null directly instead of uh, throwing a null pointer exception. So that's what we call safe indexing. Uh, the, so this one was from Java 7, the try with resource notation, since we had other mechanisms to handle resources. We never get to uh, implement that, but we are fixing that. Uh, but there's a, an even groovier way of doing things uh, than uh, compared to Java. Jill, yep. Do you start with the Java compiler and modify, or do you have to write the whole thing So say it a little bit louder. Your compiler will compile pure Java, right? We compile to? You will compile real Java as well. Real Java, yeah, real Java so 8. Do you So here we had to really re-implement the, the parser. We were using Antler 2 when the, the latest version is Antler 4. So what we wanted, to, it was very complicated to evolve the language and add new operators, etc. So we really completely rewrote the, the grammar, but still supporting the very exact same syntax, <coughs> right? Don't start from the Java parser. And uh, well, we actually started with the uh, Java 8 uh, grammar in, in, in the first place and re-added back so the Groovy features. No, 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 yeah. So it's really our own, uh, our own stuff. Uh, trying with resources, so we also support the Java 8 Lambda uh, notations, except that we have some uh, additional tweaks, like, uh, for example, the, uh, the, the return keyword is uh, implicit, although if you used curly braces here uh, in Java, you would have to explicitly use the return keyword. But some nice thing there is that we support default arguments, just like uh, in Groovy closures. So it's something where we go a little bit beyond Java 8 lambdas. We also support method references. So when you have the double uh, uh, columns there, so static methods, instance methods, uh, and also uh, instance references, or I don't know how we call them. So we will support, well, just, just like Java 8, basically. We also support the uh, method reference on constructors as well with this, uh, no, oops, with this notation. And it works also for things like uh, arrays. Uh, yeah, and uh, what's special there? Yeah, constructor references. Oh yeah, this one. Uh, the Elvis operator, 
which allows you to do something like this. So if name is not uh, null, uh, empty, etc., we're gonna this expression just uh, this part. It's gonna return name. Otherwise, it's gonna return a default value. Uh, so it's called the Elvis operator because it looks like the Elvis uh, smiley. If you <laughs> so, well, we we never managed to find a, a good name for that, so we <laughs> we called it Elvis. But then, if you wanted to do an assignment, you had to do name equals and name blah blah blah. Use the Elvis operator. So we decided to create a shortcut notation for this assignment and that we call the Elvis assignment, obviously. So you can just do uh, question mark equals, and that's uh, very, it's totally equivalent to, uh, to that, of course. <coughs> so that's uh, pretty handy, and uh, in other languages like Ruby or JavaScript, there are, uh, not in JavaScript, but at least in Ruby, there's, there was an equivalent operator uh, for, for doing that. And I'll finish with that. Uh, things like the, the, the Javadoc comments before, they were not kept in the uh, AST. So for um, code transformations, you couldn't access uh, what was part of the, um, uh, of the Javadoc comments. So we added that, so you get access to uh, that. And there's also a special annotation if you want to get, uh, if you want the GUI compiler to actually store the content of the uh, uh, the, the Javadoc uh, in, in, the, uh, in the class file so that it's available via uh, reflection. So but via reflection you can get uh, the Javadoc as well if it's annotated inside with at Groovy.com. And that's it. So sorry for rushing the, the end. So it's been a long road in the sense that uh, Groovy was first announced in uh, 2003 and I've been involved uh, in that project since uh, 2003. Uh, so it's been a long road. Uh, it's a um, project very, uh, um, very active with a lively uh, community. And uh, just, uh, just the day before, I did, did some stats, some things like uh, download numbers. And even just for the first four months of the year, we, we have already had uh, more than 12 million downloads of Groovy across the, the various versions just since the beginning of the year. Uh, and last year, for the whole year, we had 23, I think, 23 million downloads. So it's uh, a pretty significant number, uh, and uh, it's really used in uh, tons and tons of uh, various contexts. But as always, uh, uh, speaking about open source, we always welcome contributions. So if ever you want to uh, uh, get involved in, in this uh, project, don't hesitate uh, to, uh, to give a hand and, uh, and help us. And that's it. Thanks a lot for your attention. Can we have a few questions or one or two questions? Yes. <laughs> I was sure, I was sure I would get that uh, question. What, what would be your perspective? So, what's, uh, so, so Kotlin is a quite nice language. Um, I, I, I kind of feel at ease with Kotlin because there's a pretty heavy inspiration uh, taken from Groovy. So for, for example, the closure, that's the closure notation of Groovy. Uh, it's got the it default parameter. Well, that, there are many um, shortcuts or notation aspects which are uh, heavily inspired by, uh, by Groovy in Kotlin. Uh, and the other big inspiration is also, it's, it's kind of a mix of Scala plus Groovy, basically. Uh, except that uh, it decided to only go with a static uh, compilation and not with a, a dynamic aspect. So for things like um, our nice JSON support or XML support, etc., which take advantage of dynamic aspects of the language. So you don't have such things, for example, in, in Kotlin. Uh, but otherwise, no, it's a, it's a totally, totally fine language. Uh, I guess with the, um, the fact that uh, Google, my own <laughs> company, decided to go with Kotlin for uh, adding <coughs> Kotlin uh, as a new option for Android developers, uh, I'm pretty sure we are going to see a big adoption for Kotlin uh, pretty soon. Um, but uh, interestingly, when uh, the Android team decided to use Gradle, the Gradle build tool, which is using Groovy for its uh, build uh, DSL, its build syntax, uh, we also saw a, a nice, although it was 
kind of indirect. We, we also saw a nice <laughs> increase in Groovy popularity thanks to, thanks to that. So I'm, I'm sure Kotlin we will see a nice big... Uh, will, will it be just for Android development? Will it spread outside for the server side, etc.? I don't know. We'll see. But uh, it's, a, it's a nice language as well, yeah. Any other question? One more? Yes. How do you ensure your new parser passes all the old groups <laughs> out there in the wild? <laughs> so we're uh, so it's been available for a little while, but not in a released version. So we've encouraged people tons of times, uh, please test with the new parser, test with the new parser, so that we <laughs> ensure that it works. Uh, of course, we also parse our own source code. All the Groovy code in the Groovy code base, we also parse it and it works out of the box. We also parse um, the, the Grails web framework. I forget what the other projects are. Uh, I think Gradle as well, uh, plus some, some other projects. Uh, Redpack probably, yeah. Uh, so we ensure uh, that at least uh, some of the key uh, Groovy users, uh, open source projects using Groovy, also work well with the new parser. So we are highly confident that it's going to pass uh, every, pretty much every 99.9% uh, .9 of uh, Groovy code in the wild. Because, because you use WannaCry to find every Groovy file. <laughs> <laughs> we can do that. <laughs> but yeah, we are pretty confident. So the, we even went as far as checking that the, so it's not just about the syntax, but also the, uh, the AST nodes, uh, the, the structure that is actually parsed. Uh, because uh, in terms of, uh, um, even if it's the same bytecode which is generated, there are sometimes different ways of representing the code in the form of an abstract syntax tree. So we not only check that the syntax is the same, but also that the structure of the code uh, generated by the compiler before it creates the bytecode is also actually the same. Yeah. All right, thanks. <laughs>